That is, uh, people were saying, I'm a believe and I haven't been grateful. Now, you are a great part of each night. Every night you're grateful. And the, the mass is wrong. And I have found out too, and while we're just, uh, just home folks, as we call it down the path, is there some of your heroes that have been home folks? Some minister told me the day is the last is on the outside of the door. I said, what part of Kentucky are you from? Thank <laughs> you. 
sickness and this sickness and this disease and the unsaved, and then come have a prayer line and pray for the people. And let, he said, if you'll be sincere when you pray, get the people you believe in, nothing will stand before the prayer. Now that's it. Tomorrow night, if the Lord willing, we're going to have the emergency night. And that is all those who want to be prayed for. Just come up in the prayer line to be prayed for. You get your prayer card tomorrow from the boy in the city or when you get out the prayer card. The emergency night. Just come down and pray for the sick. I want to see what the Lord does tomorrow night. And Sunday night, back to the thing, until we get to the place of the Lord willing, I wish to have a great big tent one of these days for the American people to set up in the locality for few weeks, six or eight weeks at a time, and as far as then, if the people, you just get acquainted with it, and then you got to leave, you see, and then you're coming to the enemy along, right, and if you're sitting right there so they can come right to you, then it'll be different, so pray for it, and we want you to pray for it with some arm, so it'll be an emergency night, instead of having an emergency room, we'll have an emergency night at the arm. Now, let us bow our heads before we open the word. Our time is in loving power tonight. It's with the grateful heart that we approach thee in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we ask that your great power will come upon us tonight and will touch us in the heart that we will be pricked at our hearts by the God's word. Faith covered by hearing, hearing of the word of God. And we pray now that you will speak to each heart and mine also, Lord, that through the word, the word of the God, and through his word, they may find faith for salvation for the soul and peace for the body. And may we live, if possible, to see the day that when the great ransom church of God will stand united together in the full Bible with all, all the powers of the resurrection operating to her memory. Oh, what a life it would be across the world in just a few hours of time. God, we pray. For this type of need, hear us now, for we ask this for God's glory, asking that the Holy Spirit will take the word and place it in every heart just for its meaning. For we ask this in the name of thy beloved Son, Lord Jesus. Amen. In this blessed word called the Bible, and in the 17th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, I wish to read for a portion tonight the word. And after six days, Jesus taken Peter, James, and John, his brother, and brought them up into a high mountain of God. And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was as white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us take thee three tabernacles, one for thee. One for Moses and one for Elias. While he yet faith, behold the bright cloud overshadowed him. And behold the voice out of the cloud who said, This is my beloved son, and he might well be here to be him. And may the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Now for a text tonight, if it should be called that, and no matter in any kind of service, the word should have preeminence. It should be first. And the need of the soul is always first. For when a man is born again of the Spirit of God, he has his 
marvel of eternal life and shall never perish. But when a man is healed of his body, it is just for a limited time. But salvation of the soul is forever. He becomes a new creature in Christ when he's healed of his soul. But the divine healing was included in the atonement because the new atonement was much better than the old. And the old atonement had healing. And the Bible says that he was wounded for our transgression, which is right, we were healed. Had him, we were healed. Oh, it's wonderful. Now, you know, this is just a few moments. I want to say this before I start preaching, that the, the greatest need of healing tonight has been the sickest body that I know of. And all I know in the world is the body of the Lord Jesus, the church. Oh, it is horrible to It is broke up and scattered. It needs to be made God send the Holy Spirit in such a power so the whole body of Christ will be brought together from the love and unity until then you will see things happen that you never thought of before. Jesus will come and it will all be over. Now, God usually meets a man and he has on many occasions. He has met with men of few, and then he meets with large numbers, and in the council of man, God has come to meet. Now at one time he met with five hundred. Again he met with seven. And again he met with twelve. Then with three and even the one. No matter how small the audience is, Christ will meet with you and meet your needs. That's what makes him God to me, because he humbles himself. What a contrast. Man gave him the lowest name that he could be given. Uh, Prince of the Dells of Beelzebub. God gave him a name above every name that names in earth or in heaven, that names the earth and heaven have. Man placed him as low as they could put him even into the grave, and God exalted him above every angel, archangel, every principality. I thought he would be so high that he had to look down and see heaven. That's the difference what man saw in it and what God saw in it. So the one who was the highest becomes the lowest that he might receive the middle man, you and I, back to the fellowship of God. So he meets in the council of man, no matter where it is or how many, if you have a need, he'll come. He crossed the starry sea one night into the land of Galilee because one maniac was calling for him and had a seed. And after meeting that maniac, he, the people thought they would call him to the hall if they would have a body, so they asked him to leave the land and he always goes away when he's not well. So he turned back again to his own country. On this occasion, he had made three men Peter, James, John. Now, these three men represent love, hope, charity. Love, John, hope, James. I mean, and faith of the charity, and faith for the people. That in the witness of these three, the Bible says, in the mouth of three witnesses, let every word be established. And God was 
fixing to do something on this occasion that needed three witnesses or uh, an established family. And oh, how he loved to establish his word. Now there could be many angles, and I know that many fine scholars here tonight would be more capable of this, this, this God now than I. But the really, God thought doesn't do anything just to be, as we would call it in the street expression, gathering around. God speaks specifically and every word of God is eternal meaning. You get it? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And may I say this is the weakest of saints here tonight, that it might help you. When Jesus was on earth, he was at all of the Godhead bodily dwelt in him. He was God, tabernacle in flesh in the sun. Jesus is just not a prophet. He was God. A lady said to me some time ago, she said, Mr. Brown, I would love to hear you speak. And I'll say to the brethren, and if there's any offender, I don't mean to speak against any person who is in this. It's not in my heart to do that. But the lady was a Christian science. And she said, the only thing is you put too much stress and deity on Jesus Christ. And she said, you make him immortal, divine. I said, he was divine. And she said, if you mean unto them, you say in your meeting, and you will accept the Bible, what it says, that he was divine. I said, yes, ma'am. If the Bible says he wasn't divine, then I believe the Bible. But I want you to give me the word and the chapter. She said, I can preach that. I said, let's be here. And she said, on his road to resurrect Lazarus, the Bible says, and thank God the letter standard, that he wept. And said, being weeping, he could not be divine, he had to be human. Oh, I said, lady, your argument is bitter than the broke bit of a shepherd chicken and sorrow there. You know that's wrong. I said, look, you fail to see God in Christ. I said, it is true that he wept when he went to the grave of Lazarus. He was a man weeping. But when he stood his pulled his little frail body together, so he said, it goes aside, looked back, and said, Lazarus, come forth. And I man that this day, four days, going to keep living in, that was more than a man. That he was a man when he came off the mountain hungry, trying to look over a tree to find food to feed his physical needs. He was a man when he did that. But when he taken five biscuits and two little pieces and fed five thousand, that was more than a man. He was a man as he prayed for the sick as the Bible says. First he went out of it. He got beat, tired. And he was laying on the back of the ship. So tired and weary, so the station of the waves did not bother him. Perhaps 10,000 sails of the sea swore their at that night. When he was laying asleep, he was a man when he was asleep. But when he stood and put his foot on the grave, the boat looked up and said, Peace, peace, still. And the winds and the waves obeyed. That was more than a man. God see me out of that place. He did cry powerfully for mercy. My God, why has God forsaken me? He died like a man, but on Easter morning, he's gone. Oh, 
in that case, in my Father's kingdom, his house, it was called. Now in the Old Testament, when a child was born, and this is good medicine for you get the gospel. <laughs> Notice, when a child was born, automatically he became a son because he was born. A son is one begotten of. That's where you Catholic people know about eternal sonship. How can you explain that word? How can be eternal if there be a son? A son has a beginning. All right. But in this case, when a son was born into a home, then he was a son because he was born. Now, many of the Pentecostals and the Baptists and Presbyterians or Nazis, they take that as sufficient, that settles it. But it's wrong according to the word. Now, this son being born, he was given a tutor. Paul speaks of insulations and so forth. Of how a tutor was a razor or a teacher that was to teach the son. And the father, being his son, he got the very best tutor, teacher, that he could find. A man that would raise the child, not according to the way the common ethics of teaching, but to be a, an obedient child. Somebody that the father had confidence in. Are you hearing this? I want you to see it. Notice what a beautiful picture that when a child is born into the kingdom of God, the Father has given us a tutor, the Holy Spirit. Not a vision, but a Holy Spirit. A ring. And this tutor brought word to the Father how the child progressed. And so does the Holy Spirit bring to the Father how his church is progressing. Oh my. How he must pray to tell the Father the way he came on that. What should all confused? One this way, one oh, what a disgrace it is. All separated and divided, arguing and hunting and disputing over little petty differences. Unbelieved, unthankful, unholy, without even natural affection. When we should be in love with God. Now, so as the tutor and the razor that was selected by the Father, oh, do you see it? The Father never selected an archbishop. The Father never selected something else or some denomination. Oh, as good as it is. The Father selected the Holy Spirit that the archbishop. He is the razor. Now watch the, the tutor's position. What the tutor is to do is to guide and to teach. And he'll never teach anything contrary to the school book. Amen. I hope that went into the left side of the paper. In the book, this is God's eternal word and the Holy Spirit. Peace only on the word of God. Man in the internet shall not live by fed alone, but by every word that he is out of God. Is it? The Holy Spirit teaches on the word. Now, that's what he teaches. Have faith in the word. Believe the word. But now, we got away from that. We believe the church. And with all our respect, great programs are crossing the nation which ought not to be even on television. Saying that the Bible is nothing but the church. But the Bible says every man's word be a lie and mind be 
the truth. Whosoever shall take one thing out of this book, or add one thing to it, is partly taken from the book of life, that is the word of God. Paul said, Lord, angel, let it all be. Artificial, or whatever, hope, or whatever it might be. Lord, angel from heaven, receiving other words to you than this word of all praise and praise, let him be unto you a curse. Galatians 1.8. You see, so the Holy Spirit is teaching the believer the Word, and the believer is driving and sitting on the Word. Now, the Holy Spirit back to the Holy Spirit, he would go up and he say, Now I tell you, this boy, no matter how good a boy he was, how bad he was, he was still a son. Because he was born a son. But if he brought word that he wasn't a very good child, he was still a parent, he wasn't mindful of the father of this. That child never come into position to where he should be. But if the boy was a good boy, and was really up and at his father's business, then immediately, the, the tutor said to the father, Oh, what a fine boy. He's a lovely chap. And he's worthy. He's watching every move for the embarrassment of your affairs. Are we about our father's business of the Holy Spirit? He said, Give me every soul say we can. Just uh, just go to work our way. Here is this military and our literary given. And splitting hair and such No wonder we say that no Now, but then the boy never become no more than just the boy around the place. But if he was a good boy, and if the battle of the citizens, the tutor, the razor, they were to the daughter, and then at a certain time, teacher, I'm speaking of the blazing of a child. You understand what I mean? All right, the speaking. We were we destinated into the adoption of sons to Jesus Christ. All right. Notice, then the son, if he was a good boy and was very up and at it with the father's business, one day the father taking that son out into a public place. And robed him in a beautiful garment and set him up before the public and had a ceremony. And he adopted his own child into his family. And in other words, he positioned, placed his son. From then on, his name was just as good on the deck as his father's was. It was a placing of a son. And God back in the Old Testament in the shadow of the new to come did the same thing by his son. He gave him three witnesses and took him up on the mount which is called Mount Transfiguration. And there appeared unto them first Moses and Elijah. First, Moses and Elijah. Now, Peter got all excited. And he said, Lord, it's really good to be here. So I'll tell you what let's do. Let's just build three tabernacles here. And we don't have one of the Lord to keep the law. That's what we got excited about. Those who want to keep the Sabbath and the new movies and not eat meat and so forth, we'll make a tabernacle for them. And then we'll make a tabernacle for those who believe in the prophets and the Old Testament, and we'll make one for them. And then we'll make another one for those who want to come for you. Peter said, I think that would be good. But Jesus was transfigured before them. God placed his son and he smoked him with the fire that glistened like the 
father, one way is called to the father, and visited by God, and positionally placed into the body of Christ as a teacher, prophet, evangelist, teacher, pastor, whatever he has been obedient since he's been born, God places that person. Is this? Now, then his authority comes from God. Then his message comes from God. Now, we have a lot of discrimination, but God backs up his message. When God does it, God proves it. God stands back. The Father stood by his son in the old heaven. The Father stands by his son in the heaven. Whatever he says, I'll do it. See? It's what you're in him. Aren't you glad that you can't bring me in? Why? Moses represented the law. No man can keep the law. There's no flesh saved by the law. The law was a, a contender of the people. No one could be saved and keep the law. No word that you can, you can save it. You might do one thing, join church, baptize, forward, backward, whatever you will, that doesn't have anything to do with it. You are not saved by your word. If by grace are you saved, that is the gift of God. No man can come to me that my father draws me first. You said, I saw after God knows you was never no brother. It was God speaking after you. No man can come to me except my father draws him first. All that come to me, there is, they are God's love gift to Christ. And you're not yours, but you belong to Christ. The Father has brought you out of the light of sin and has given you to Christ, and Christ sent the Holy Spirit to tutor you or to raise you to believe him. And go by his school book. Amen. Now, amen means so fear. I believe it. I'm not amen in myself, but I, I, I like the word amen. Notice that I'm so glad that he said that. The law may save you, but why do I want to hear you him? He's the only one that has salvation. He's the only one that can give you life. He's the only one that can give you healing. He's the only one that can take away that burden. He's the only one who can raise you up at the last day. That's the reason here you need him. Look at Paul, the law. No man can be judged, justified by the law. Because no man ever can. I've got a cry. Then here, no Elijah. What did Elijah represent? Elijah represents the justice of God. The line of God's justice. He went up on the mountain and sat down. And they sent a captain of fifty. And he raised up. They were interfering with God's program. He said, if I be the man of God, let fire come from heaven and consume him. And then I'll come by and so the captain probably said, and the king said, it was just an accident, it was an act of nature. So we have got another captain. So we got another captain and another fifty. And when he got up to where he was, he said, yes, I be a man of God. Let fire come from heaven and consume you and down across the fire. Oh, my. Who was going to stand under the judgment of God? I certainly don't plead for his judgment. I plead for something else for his mercy. Don't hear his oldness anymore. Your self-righteous rags won't stand anyhow. Don't plead for justice because you were you don't even have a chance. You were born in sin, shaken in iniquity. Come to the world and be denied. You don't have a chance. So it's not justice that we preach for. But I'm so glad. As we look at that dark picture, turn this way. And they looked and they saw Jesus only. What did he stand for? The love of God. For everyone. 
The love of God, Jesus is in heart. Hear me. Not our laws, our creeds, our affiliations, and denominations, but the love of God. And man today is constrained by the Holy Spirit to come and love him and serve him, or he's seeking to, to do that. God is looking for somebody who will stand out on the front line with love. Not with her education. I'm not trying to support my ears. But I am trying to say that it doesn't take scholarship. It takes a surrendered heart that God can make love. You don't know the Bible has it to the devil with us. So what does it do here to someone says, I don't know that brother Brandon, you fix up you want to teach it this way. I said, sir, I may not know the word very well, but I know the author of the word. Not to know his word of life, but to know him of his life. To know Christ is life. Know him in a personal experience. The word opens up to you. A look to you. My life, the Bible is a love letter. My wife writes me, I love my mama. And she writes me a love letter. And she says, Billy, I'm sitting on the children I am so And I must be putting on the paper. But I love her and she loves me, and it's just a connection I can read between the lines. I know what she's saying. Or well, it's a love affair. In, in her words, she is protecting me. And in the word, knowing her so well, we love each other so we can read between the lines. Oh, I am so happy that Christ said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast hidden this from the seminary. I mean, the Bible is a Christian. And as we see the today, Sunday would learn. That was learned from the mother, from the word. It's a love letter. You read between the lines. That is where you find it. It's not a law, not a sound of a serpent, but the love of a kind, heavenly father who loves. When I leave home, my house, thank God for it. In the order of the Lord's work, I trust. And it's my honor to be home to go overseas. Now, I don't take it to grandma and say, Why don't you be here, my dear lady? I'm going to tell you something. When I go overseas, thou shalt not ask any more husband. If thou want to make any love to any other man, Thou shalt not do this and do that. Then as I give up all of her laws, then she say, Just a minute, my young fellow. Thou shalt not have any other wives on your own. Thou shalt not take any other woman out to dinner. That is it. We don't even think of such a thing. When I get ready to leave, she was the mother of my three children. We just kneel down in the room. And we put our arms around each other. And I said to her, sweetheart, I am so happy to have a wife like you. And she said, I am so happy to be married to the servant of the Lord. I said, I know it would be lonesome for me. Oh, God. But I'll be praying for you. She said, I'll be praying for you, honey, that God will use you to win the souls to you. If that helps me. Then we offer our prayers to God to bless us and watch us over while we are separated one from another. And I get up, kiss her goodbye, go out the door, and head for get it out until I come back. I'm not scared of you go to run back. She's not scared of me. Go take it out of the other woman. As long as we love one another like 
like that. We only get true to each other. And as long as you love the Lord Jesus, you do what He wants you to do, and do nothing to harm you. It's love that the world will be born. So I speak with tongues of men and angels, said Paul. I have become as a sound and bright and a deacon table. So I have power to do miracles to move the mountains. So he can do all of these things and have not love, I am nothing. Don't judge the man because he can pray for their faith for the sick and they get well. Don't judge the man because he might do some supernatural miracle as being a sainted person. But the only way that you can judge is by the love that they have for Christ and for each other. And do you see what the Holy Spirit has to bring to the Father? That we're all separated and no love for each other? So what do you want to see at this place? Here's Here some time ago, as you know, I'm a hunter. And I love the wilderness.
and he's a policeman of the woods now. And I noticed down under the low down, the great storm had, had forced the big eagle down in that low down. And that's what he was barking at, not the noise I was making. But the eagle was in his pine cones there. And up on the limb jumped the great, big, graceful bird called the eagle. I stopped and I thought, well, I know you're in that wolf call and the elk call, you're in the sunset, you're in the rainbow, you're just everywhere, but what about this? What kind of seed is this? So I watched him a little while. And I said, well, I wonder why God wants me to look at that. And all of a sudden, I noticed the big eagle wasn't a scam. God don't want coward. God wants man to pray. He can't use a coward that will run down and pray to testify your duty or tell your neighbor, your boss, what God has done for you or give praise to Christ. Shame to speak up in that hour when the trial comes and you're praying to say that you're a Christian. God can't use you. I doubt that there will be able to do such as that. That's right. You are not much good for anything then. But this eagle, I know he's being brave. And I thought I'll try out his bravery. And I said, Tell us those great, big, great eyes looking at me and at the time for And I said, Do you know I could shoot you? Which I was looking, I admire him. I said, Do you know I could shoot you? He just kept moving his wings. And I said, I said, I grabbed my gun, like for the gun. Jump. And he looked at it. And he kept moving his wings. Oh, I said, thank you, Father. I see what it is. You have provided that eagle with two wings. And as long as he can feel that those wings are in condition, he knows that he can beat you in the foot of that bushy. He has confidence in his God-given protection. And if an evil can have confidence in his God-given protection, what ought the church to do with the Holy Spirit? Your God-given protection and tutor. When sickness strikes or when trouble strikes, I looked at him. He knew I was admiring. And he knew he could be in the top of that bush before I could get that rifle and be out of the way. So he knew his judgment was right. And as long as he could feel all clean, working all right, everything was okay. Now, as long as a Christian can feel and know that your experience in your life, and you can feel the Holy Spirit in your life, the devil can't block you. You know where you stand. And everyone, he got tired of that little old chatter chatter. So he just gave a great big bounce, made about two flops, and then I began weeping. As I noticed that big graceful bird, set his wings, he never flopped anymore. He just knows how to maneuver those wings, those God-given gifts that he has. He just knows how to maneuver them in the air. And he went up, 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 until he becomes just a little spot. I went out the back in Lord. Get so tired of this little chatter, 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 chatter. Tell me just got out of the hearing of it. I said that it is if the church only knew how to set their face, their wings of faith in the rolling powers of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and rise above this chatter, chatter, chatter. Pop up to the Presbyterian 
She was looking down the rifle bear. The baby in trouble, she seen the hunter and the gun raised. But where was the baby? She walked on into the opening. I said, oh, God, please, oh, don't let him do it. How can he do that? They got a scream. I noticed the gun didn't fire. Very quick shot. I looked back, and I just saw him with his gun, and the gun there was shaking. I looked at him. He turned around, and tears was rolling down his cheeks. He laid his gun down his bed and her legs. He said, Billy, I've had enough. I can't do it, Billy. Pray for my sinful soul. What was it? He saw a display of real mother love that would walk in the face of death because the baby was in trouble. People, God is looking for man and women who has the love of God in their hearts, who can walk in the face of death itself and call those things which are not as though they were called God said so. The love of God in their hearts. Let's pray. While our heads is bowed, and everyone prays to me. I feel constrained at this time to do something. I'm going to ask you a real sincere question. If you're not a Christian or you have professed Christ and you've never made a real stab, aren't you kind of ashamed of your confession? Though you've gone to the church for many years, but you really never have been born again. You've never, you've kind of listened to the creed of the church, you've never listened to the Holy Spirit wooing and teaching you to come to Christ. And you would like to step out tonight as a real hero and show your display of real gallant love for Christ. While your heads are bowed and the Christians are praying, I wonder if you just raise up your hand, not to me, the preacher, but to God, and say, God, tonight, in my heart, I now raise my hand. I want to be full of your love, that I can display your love to the world as an example of Christ. Take me tonight and fill me with the Holy Spirit. Forgive my sins and make me a new creature. Down on the bottom floor, would you put up your hand while every head down? God bless you. God bless you. You, 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 you. God bless you, young lady. Over to my right. God bless you, lady. God bless you, sir. Someone else over to my left. Raise your hand and say, Pray for me, brother Brown. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. That's, it's a great thing. God bless you. God bless you, young man. Someone else on the bottom floors before we go into the back. Oh, Christ. God bless you, brother. Make me, God bless you, Lord. Make me to have such divine love for you, Lord, in my heart. That I can display your love. I can stand in the face of death. I can go anywhere, testify anywhere. I want you. God bless you, sister. God bless you. God bless you. Up in the balcony and now, up anywhere in there, would you raise your hand? God bless you over here to my left. God bless you here in the center. God bless you up there, up there. God bless you. Yes, over here to the right. Anybody would say, God bless you, young man. Someone else say, Brother Brown, you remember me tonight. God bless you back there, young fellow. God bless you, sir. God bless you, baby. God bless you, young lady. You little boy. Back there, young lady. Yes, God you. I want you to remember me, Brother Brown. Right now, the Holy Spirit is beating in my heart and saying, Oh, I want you. God bless you, sir. I want you, 
says the Holy Spirit, I want you to make a stand for me tonight. I want you to step right out and display your, this deity that I give you now. That you know you're seeing and seeing me. The Holy Spirit's trying to bring you the love gift of God. And you won't be doing it for you. You know, God to bring you in. When you're ready to hand someone else in heaven, fill me, O oh God, with your Holy Spirit. Seal me into your kingdom. God bless you. The man and woman there. Yes, the Lord bless you. God bless you, young lady, at the top of the mountain. I'm just watching God see every hand and hold every heart. God bless you. God bless you. You, you, you down there, yes. You here, God bless you, sir. Even some of this rubber out of the seat turned right around weeping. Do you know that is what we need? You have to have a breaking up before you can have a remolding. The prophet went to the power house. We don't need any theology now. We need love. Oh, love of God, how rich, how pure, how fabulous and strong. It shall forevermore endure saints and angels' song. After all things are gone, love stands forever. Miracles, prophecies, teachings, and so forth, wisdom and knowledge, tongues and interpretation, all fail to see, but the love of God still endures. Saints and angels' song. God so loved the world. Do you so love God for loving you? God made you what you are and gives you a choice. If you want to live, you can accept it. I guess some 50 or 60 hands is one up in the village. Wants to be remembered in prayer at this time. Is there another just before closing? I feel kind of strange about I feel like there's someone else maybe. That would raise your hand. You say, does that mean it ever? Yes, God bless you, young man. God be with you. All right. Now, if your head bowed, I'm going to do what? Now, look. What made you raise your hand? What did that? Jesus said, no man can come to me except my Father draw me. First. And all that comes to me, I'll give them everlasting life and raise them up at the last day. I'm going to work with Jesus' work. I know we have customs. We, we have an altar here. We come to the altar, but we have no altar. Right where you're sitting is where God convicted you. Right where you're sitting is where God gave you the Christ. Right where you're sitting, you can receive the Holy Spirit. He's here now. Let's see what Jesus said. St. John 5, 24. Are you praying? Listen to his word. Jesus' word. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath present in everlasting life and shall never come into the judgment but hath passed from death unto life. How simple, how sweet the Father has made it so simple for us. Not complicated, not educational program, not creed and catechism to learn, but to know Him by love. The Father has made it so simple. He that heareth my word and believeth on Him that sent me hath present in eternal life. Is the Holy Spirit eternal life? Yes. And shall not come into judgment or condemnation, but pass, pass sin, pass from death unto life. Now, Heavenly Father, somehow the great Holy Spirit is moving in our midst. All through the lower floors and the upper floors of the Hands of men and women, some of them aged and some young, some of them middle aged. And they are, have accepted you as their Savior.
nature and desiring to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to be taught of Him, to lead a humble life, to have the fruit of the Spirit in their life, and become salty in their walk and in their life so that the world will thirst. That ye are the salt of the earth. And they want to be so seasoned with the Holy Spirit. Until men and women will say, Oh, I'd like to be like he or she. I believe they're real Christians. They have the fruit of the Spirit of love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, patience. God granted just now. May the miracle of the greatest miracles be performed by this already been. They raised their hand and they could not have done it unless they were convinced, unless you had brought them. And they raised their hand to you that they wanted to make a stand tonight for you. And I pray that the great Holy Spirit who put their name on the book of life just then will brood over them as he did at this before they were even on the earth and brought them to this far and now has given them to the Father and the Father has given them to Christ. And I pray that you'll fill in the heart of the Holy Ghost and may the members of the church go back to their local churches testifying and glorifying God. Grant the Lord, may the Holy Ghost come upon them and may there be an old fashioned revival break out in this city here and surround about the wind and the soul of the nations to Christ. Grant it, Father. Do this for you that whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. That's your promise to the believer. And tonight, as a believer, I will believe, O Jehovah God, that every soul that you let me see raise their hands and those who I did not see. I ask you, Lord, that you will take them and will nurture them and tutor them by the Holy Spirit and may I meet them in glory someday when life's journey is finished. And the great atomic war bears raging fixing to break forth at any time. May they be caught up together with those who sleep in the dust of the earth and meet the Lord in the air and forever be with him. Grant it, Father, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Oh, I love him. Isn't he wonderful? How clean you feel. The word, the washing of the water by the word, the water of separation. And we're washed by the water of the word and separates us from the things of the world to a consecrated life with Jesus. Oh, it's mostly almost 10 o'clock. I've been so long. But, friends, I feel that this is more profitable than anything. Salvation is so. Did you give out prayer? I don't believe I'm going to use them. I just feel constrained not to. Jesus is here. And we don't need prayer cards. Prayer cards are only to keep people in line. But I believe that we have did that which was right in this time. And I believe that the Bible teaches that he's a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmity. Does the Bible say that? And if he was here tonight and you would ask him to heal you, he would merely say to you and point you to his word, he has already redeemed you from sin and sickness. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chapter of our peace was up on him, and with his stripes we were healed. It's a finished work he was born to do. But 
If the Bible says that he could be touched by the feeling of our infirmity, there was a woman once who had an infirmity and touched his garden. And she went off into the audience. And Jesus said that he got weak. The immortal Christ said he got weak. Wonder why he got weak. Strange went away from him. It's hard to understand. It cannot be explained. Did you ever know that poets and prophets are considered neurotic? Did you ever think? Look at William Pepper. Gave America his best folk songs. He's misunderstood. Every time he would go into inspiration and write a song, he'd get on a drum. Finally, as you come out under inspiration one time, he didn't know where he was at, right? And he left the inspiration. He called the service a couple of raisins and then stood time. I stood by the side. That was Stephen Foster, I think, your heart. And William Kepper, I did stand by his grave in London, England, not long ago. And then William Kepper gave the world a great song. He wrote that kind of song. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from a mangled vein. When sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stains. And when he come out, did you ever read the history of that? When he come out under that inspiration, he was carried away from when he penned that song. So he got in a cab and tried to find the river to commit suicide. Consider it a right. Jonah, as you had an inspiration on him to preach to a city the size of St. Louis, and they remitted to the cut of sackcloth on their animals, then when the Spirit that him, he prayed for God to take his life. Elijah stood under an inspiration called fire out of heaven and called rain on the same day. And then when the inspiration left him, he was wandering in the wilderness for 40 days and nights, and God found him pulled back in a little cave. The angel on the pool of the water, the first man stepping in was faith. Child of that angel, the whole virtue of the angel left the water, and they had to wait for another season. A little woman touched the garment of the Lord Jesus, and the Emmanuel, the fullness of God in him, and he turned and said, Who touched me for I got weak? When you wonder. Now, if he is a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmity, now since he's being glorified, and if our infirmity is being paid for, how will we know whether we touch him? He has to be the same. To go out into the audience and find the same. Is that right? We heard it. I believe tonight if you will be rare, real, rare, and will. Ask God, and we'll just pray, and let the Holy Spirit move into the audience so these young Christians that just accepted Christ can see that the Christ that they accepted is not a mythical or a bunch of creeds, it's a living God. Father God, in Jesus' name we commit this audience to thee. There's six people here, and I know that you are here, the great healer, that you've already purchased their healing. And now, Heavenly Father, as a confirmation of thy word, I pray that you will do something tonight, right here, just the way you did it before you were crucified. Like those who went to the Emmaus and on the road over there, they were talking with you, they didn't recognize it. But once when you got them inside, the door is closed. You did something just like you used to do it before your crucifixion, and they recognize that it was you. Do it again tonight, Father. We just look upon this audience, and we surrender ourselves to thee. And look, faith has been born, and I took up my time, but I pray that you will excuse the time and will receive the people into your kingdom and to your grace. And may I be served now, be anointed for this service, that's coming on, and may everyone here be anointed. And may we see the working of the hands of the living God who is in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I say this to respect. Look this way. How many people in here are sick? I don't want to care, or I don't want them to die there, or raise your hand. Six points to our immediate. Anyone down in the doctor where it says it's raised? You're all totally strangers to me. 
Jesus, when he stood and looked at the audience, he, how many was never in one of my meetings this year? Just the Dr. David you explain before I come in the working. You understand how it's been explained? How that I, my contentions are that Jesus Christ has raised the dead, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. When he looked up all the audience and found a little woman, when the Samuel come, he didn't know him, said who he was, Paul Peter, who he told him he did his name and all of the whole mind. Just and he said, I don't do nothing until the Father shows me first. Say John 5 19. How many know that's true? The Son can do nothing in himself until he sees the Father do it. He perceived the thought he done all of that he was God. He's raised in the dead. Now look at this way, get the best wife, and pray. And say, my, uh, it doesn't make a difference if I touch you or you touch me. That has nothing to do with it. You touch him. I'm not the high priest. He is the high priest. That can be touched by the feeling of our infirmity. How many know that the word of God is? Now, you look to him. Now, what are we branches? What's he? Vine. Does the vine bear fruit? No, the branches bear fruit. Then our hands are his hands. Our eyes are his eyes. We are to surrender our all. And if Jesus Christ will come now visibly and works, outside of Satan, do what he's just done, will come and will speak and do just as he did before his crucifixion. Would you believe he's raised to be, be here? Would you accept it, everyone? Uh, all of you in the audience with one accord, bless your heart. This is an awful challenge. But what is it? Someone said to me, well, now, Brother Brandon, aren't you afraid? No, sir. Just as an eagle. I feel and know the Holy Spirit here and know that He called me to do this. I have not one fear. It's His work, not mine. I have nothing to do with it. It's your faith touching God. You're at the breakfast this morning and I explained that. The woman used God's gift. God used His own gift in the resurrection of Lazarus and others. But when the woman does it, she used God's gift. And this is the place you're using the Holy Spirit, God's gift. And we're set in it by God's branches. Now look and believe. And maybe God has who some days we'll stand in his presence. May he give to me a humble servant. This is that I ask now for his Lord. In Jesus' name. so glad that the piano playing, I just believe on the Lord, and we don't be looking to look at the end. Be praying, say, Lord, be merciful to me. Now, anyone knows it's read the book and so forth and knows me, I'm just a man. Don't know a person in here at all. As I look over the audience, I met this Methodist preacher sitting here this morning. And I believe this is Mr. Smith sitting right here in the recorder. I know those sitting there. I know none of the rest of you. But there's someone here who knows you. And that's the high priest of Christ. The same prayer. I watch the Holy Spirit, Christ, is here. When he says, the words that I do should you also live while in the world, that is the unbeliever, will see me no more. Yet ye shall see me. Did he say that? I, personal pronoun, will be with you, even in the end, to the end of our world. Showing himself. The Bible said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What did Paul see after his resurrection? What did he look like? A lion. On his road to Damascus. He said, I came from God. Who was he? The pillar of fire, the blessed children of Israel. That is the ark of the covenant. Anyone knows that was Christ. And then he said, I come from God, the Lord. 
and I go back to God. And when Paul see, he was the Logan. That's what he is tonight. How many of you ever seen a picture of him? Have they taken scientific and using techniques? Dr. Engineer, Washington, D.C., for the FBI examination. I have that proves both to the church and to the world. I've told the truth. Christ is alive. And he's proved it. If I die this night, and this is my last message, my words are true. The church knows it. Millions I preach that get directly to direct over 10 million people around the world. They know it. And science knows it because they took a camera and sat around in America and one in Germany and took a picture of it. That's a science. It's in the book here. It's not a very good book. It's not mine. It's copyrighted. The American Photographer Association used to take it on. I buy it. I usually have them in the to sell. It's what I get them for. I, I don't take money. Don't, I don't need money. Your little love gifts people give me once in a while I live by it. That's all I need. I can only say what I see. I would wish that my audience, I hope you do not judge me wrong as a servant of God and your brethren. Christ, the Holy Spirit, is here. He is present now. And is, what is this? I'm just healing myself. And you just heal yourself. And God can use us when we get ourselves out of the way if we're gifted for certain things. Like a minister preaching. I'm not a preacher. I can't preach. I'm not educated. But I, my gift is to yield to the Holy Spirit. Here it is. And in Christ's name, I take every spirit under here under my control for the glory of God. I only wish you could see what I'm looking at. There is a light going over a man. He's praying. The man is saying, Lord, let it be me. Wearing a blue and red hat, sitting right here. You, you believe you could be His servant? If God will tell me what you're wanting from God, will you accept it? You will. You have a prayer card. You don't. You got kidney trouble, but you want Christ to heal. If that's right, wave your hand back for my Receive it, man. In Jesus' name. Have faith in God. No doubt. Believe with all your heart. You believe that He's raised from the dead? Aren't you happy you received Him a few moments ago? There's no other religion in the world can prove their founder are all dead and in the grave but Christ rose. Christianity can prove right here that he's a living on anybody that Mohammed and the Buddha says, let me see you produce what he said, bring him to the meeting. Something's happened in heaven, sir. What did you touch? Not me. hear what he said? How did I know what he was praying about? I was taking God bless you. <laughs> Have faith in God. Just pray, don't now. Isn't this wonderful? I just be real there. Don't move around. Don't be real. He will come again. Just look like it's just you all I know and you can't explain God. Here it is. 
the little lady sitting to my right. She's wearing a white hat. She's praying, Lord, let me be. She's sitting right here at the side of a woman that's crippled or something. On the end of the road. Do you believe, lady, that you've made a contact with God? You believe me to be his prophet, his servant? If God would tell me what you're praying for, would you be the same Christ who could tell the woman at the well for her trouble? You would believe it? You're wanting Christ to deliver you from an asthmatic condition. That's right, raise up your hand. There seems to be a man associated there somewhere. Oh, is the lady sitting next to you? If a woman of free is not for herself, the little lady with the sweater, she's praying for someone else. That's the man, isn't it? He's not here either. It's your father. He has arthritis. Raise up your hand if that's witness the truth. You have a prayer for lady. You don't. Maybe you go home and find your father as you have believed. Someone here just really pray. There you stand. Oh, if you could just see this light moving and over. There it is, it's a little lady. Way back here towards the back. She's putting her handkerchief up to her eyes. She's got a little black hat on, a little thing on her shoulder. She's suffering with a nervous condition. And she's been in and out of the hospital. She's had an operation. That's right, isn't it, lady? Stand up just a minute, lady. This is the lady right here. Yeah. Others are praying in front of you. I've never seen you, lady. We're total strangers, one another. Is that right? You believe me to be his servant? You believe that he died and rose again, and he's come back in the form of the Holy Spirit and performing the same works, and you touch something out of you were praying that I would call him. Isn't that right? And now just a moment I can catch the vision again. Yes, I see you all upset about something. And I see, yes, it's operation, and operations is amazing there. That's right, isn't it? And you're not from this city. Neither are you from this state. You're from Michigan. Right. And you're praying for someone else. And that I see you as years have passed back down your life. And you're holding a little baby in your arms, and the baby is blind. It was born blind. You've become a Christian. You pray for the baby. The baby has received its sight. And now it's part of that, and it's going blind again. And you're wanting Christ to heal that baby. And that you might know that I'll be God's prophet. The baby looks very pale, the child does. Uh, it's real white headed. Pink kind of guy. It's an albino child. That is true. And your name is Alma. 
some that your life is easy. That's right, isn't it? Take that handkerchief that you wipe your tears with and place it on the child. Go down and receive what you ask for in Christ. Are you aware that the Holy Spirit is there? Just be aware. It seems to be right the lady sitting next to her uh, life is moving over the woman. She's got her handkerchief up to her mouth. Stand up, lady. Right next to her. You were praying yourself. Do you believe me to be his servant? Do you believe that the Spirit is on you now? Isn't that a wonderful thing? Love, meet, patience, the Holy Spirit. Yes, you are praying for a condition that's in your body called a hurting. That's right, isn't it? And I see a man up here by you. And it's dark around the man. It's your husband. He's unsaved. And you're praying for his salvation. That's the best of the law. Take the handkerchief you have in your hand, slip it under his pillow. Don't doubt, but believe. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thou art the great I am. We pray that you will be merciful to many here tonight. Let them know that it's you, the great Father of our spirit.
Make God help us there. It's over to the lady that he might take fun of me with a black dress on. She has a garden. That's right, lady. You're not from this city. You believe he could be God's son? If the Holy Spirit will tell me where you're from or something about you, would you believe him? Will all of the Bible believe? While I have contact with the lady, through the Holy Spirit. You were praying, wasn't you, lady? And here's another thing you might know. You prayed for this before you left home. You're from another city. And you're taking something like that. It's a smaller place called my my Amber. That is right. Do you believe now? Then go home and be healed. Are you believing everyone? Do you believe his presence is here? He's on evidence. He's on the presence. He's all around everywhere. Believe on him now and be healed. I want you to do something for me. There it is again. Our kind of heavenly Father, oh, to know your presence is here now, how you are proving that you have raised from the dead, and that the Bible is God's infallible word. You're the high priest that can be touched by the feet of our infirmity. And we are so thankful for it. And you had to make a way to prove that scripture. And tonight it has been fulfilled for Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh God, how we love you. How we worship you. You are in our midst. The shout of the king is here. The great Jehovah who marches on. And time does not bother him. He marches on through eternity, eternity through eternity, the everlasting I am, the creator of heaven and earth, the author of every good gift, and the whatever that is good in all heaven and earth belongs to you. Oh God, be good to these people tonight, and cast away the unbelief that's in the midst of the people, and all the superstitions that the Holy Spirit might with one great glass just now take this American congregation Lord, who sin grows up with creeds and denominations of superstition. Oh Father, drive the enemy away and break forth in the Shekinah glory and bless the Lord of his soul tonight and heal the sick that's in the midst of the people for the glory of God. Grant it, God. I condemn the devil. I defy the devil. And I ask that the devil leave here. And every unbelief that he has with him, that will go for this audience. And the people will be made completely whole in Jesus Christ.